previously on Days Cars 393 Windsor Build. The first issue is RPMs. If you are wanting to maximize your torque, you are going to sacrifice overall horsepower. If you're wanting to maximize overall horsepower, it's going to come at the cost of low end torque. The second issue is all of these specs for a camshaft are interrelated. With that in mind, changing one spec affects how the other spec is responding to the overall configuration of the motor. Why is it so hard to pick a camshaft? Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. This is video number eight of my 393 Windsor build. And if you've not seen the previous seven videos, make sure you check that playlist out. How did I decide what specs were important? How did I wade through all the different options? And how did I settle on this camshaft? So here's the basics of a camshaft. You have three specs. You have lift. You have duration. So that's how long the valve is open. Now keep in mind that it's not open at max during that entire rotation. That's why you get oftentimes duration at 50 thousandths lift. So it's how long it's going to be open once it's open at least 50 thousandths. And the third spec is lobe separation angle. Well, the first thing I looked at was lift. The heads that I'm using max out at 0.55, max lift. I also know from experience, both on forums and in real life, that the moment you start increasing your lift significantly more than 0.5 inches, everything else has to be upgraded. The rockers have to be super high quality. The valves typically need to be a little lighter. The springs have to be of the highest quality. If you don't do those things, because now with more lift, the valve is opening further and it has more distance to travel, which means at high RPMs, it is having to make that distance even faster. And without going with lighter valves, without going with heavier springs, without going with heavy duty rockers, you are running the risk of valve float. So anything you can do to stay closer to 0.5 inches, the better off the life of your valve train was gonna be. So that eliminated three quarters of the cams that I was even slightly interested in. The next specs, we're familiar with all these, you have duration and lobe separation angle. Now, lobe separation angle has to do with two things. Basically, the closer the exhaust and intake valve are in their opening, the rougher your idle is gonna be, but you're gonna get more scavenge effect at the higher RPM as the exhaust is leaving, it's gonna suck fuel and air in. And so that's why if you are trying to build a massive high horsepower motor, oftentimes that lobe separation angle is fairly close. The angle of the two lobes is more acute. If it's more obtuse, you get a much smoother idle, but you get less scavenge and you get less higher end RPM. But it's not a spec in and of itself. Hear me right here. And this is why camshafts can be so confusing and so challenging to figure out. If you have a fairly wide lobe separation angle, say it's 114 degrees, but you have a lot of duration, the overlap between the exhaust event and the intake event could be the same as a narrower lobe separation angle, say 108, with less duration. So duration and lobe separation angle have a significant effect on each other. Again, all these numbers don't mean a whole lot unless you are a camshaft expert. I'm not a camshaft expert. You're probably not a camshaft expert. So we can understand how it all works and still not be able to pick a camshaft. Now, this is where I am super lucky. I have a piece of software that came out in 2000 called Dyno 2000. It is a digital dyno that you have seen featured on my channel for 
other projects that I'm doing. You put in all the specs for your motor. You put in camshaft specs. You can put in flow numbers for heads. You can put in single plane, dual plane intake, uh, headers, mufflers, open exhaust. There's lots of things that you can put in to get a ballpark horsepower and torque rating. Now I say ballpark because one, it's definitely a little on the high side. When people have had me crunch the numbers for them and then they've spent time at an actual dyno, the numbers that I get are about 10% higher. These numbers do not take into account the plethora of intake manifolds that are out there. This intake flows better than this intake or does this for low end torque or low end horsepower. There are so many different intake options and there are no flow specs that you can put in for the intake. Your choices are single plane or dual plane. So that right there makes for a huge variation. But the one thing that this software does extremely well is it plots out torque and horsepower curves. And it allows you to take the camshaft specs for a camshaft like this and put it in. And then it allows you to take the camshaft specs for this right here and also put it in. I plotted the information for multiple camshafts into my digital dyno to get a general shape of my horsepower and torque curves. I must have done it for a dozen different camshafts, but the important ones for this video are the original truck cam, which we've now determined is not as good as it would have been for just a basic 351. It was recommended that I look at the HO cam, the cam that came in late 80s, early 90s Mustangs and other 302s that were performance-based. This cam right here and the E303 cam. Now E303 is basically a Ford Motorsport camshaft that is still designed to work with the OEM computer without flashing, that kind of thing. You may have to do a few tuning things, but it's it's pretty much a straight drop-in. And everything that I was looking at really does fall into that category. So I took the specs from those four camshafts and I plotted them in my digital dyno. We start with the truck cam. And as you can see, there is tons of low end torque, but that torque begins to drop off at about 4,000 RPM. And because of that, horsepower maxes out at around 5,000 RPM. And I wanted a motor that was gonna have more torque closer to the 5,500 RPM range and give me a little more horsepower at the upper end. I then plotted the HO cam. If you look at this graph, we have the truck cam in red and the HO in blue. As you can see, the peak torque is almost the same but we definitely get a little more RPM range out of the torque, and we de definitely get a bump in horsepower, both in the RPM range that we peak horsepower and the RPM range where we're still producing good horsepower. I then compared the truck cam to this TrickFlow cam. And as you can see, we're definitely taking a fairly good hit on torque at the lower RPMs. But again, we are increasing the RPM range slightly, giving a slightly wider power band, and definitely adding more horsepower. The nice thing about this cam is torque peaks at right around 4,500 RPMs. And as I said before, this is a max of 5,500 RPM motor. If you look at the horsepower line, it is maxing at 5,500 RPM. There is a perfect fit between this camshaft and the RPM range where I intend to use this motor. Last, I plotted the E303, and as you can see, compared to the truck cam, significant loss of torque at lower RPMs, and a lot more horsepower, and we've now moved the horsepower range closer to 6,000 RPMs. Interestingly enough, these four graphs are almost identical, with the exception of how the curve is tilted with the truck cam being more at the beginning and less at the higher rpms and with each step we're losing a little torque and we're gaining a little more horsepower and high rpm functionality ultimately it came down to the ho cam or this trick flow cam they perform very similarly they're about the same the curves are almost identical and i could get this for a little less money than 
the HO cam without getting a used one. I didn't really want a used HO cam. And so this is what I ultimately decided to get. With this camshaft, the price was right. The RPM range was perfect for where I'm going to be using it. The lift was exactly what I needed to maximize horsepower and torque without the detriment of having to upgrade the valve train. And the lobe separation angle and duration should one, give me pretty good power without sacrificing the drivability and the idle at low RPMs. Now I'm sure you've watched this video and in a lot of your minds, I'm wrong. Because again, everyone has a different camshaft opinion. But you know what they say about opinions? Opinions are like rear ends. Everybody has one, no one wants to hear it. I wanted to hear it. I wanted to know what people that are smarter than I am thought about the camshaft. And they gave me a good starting point. But thankfully, I was able to use their information, pick several cams, and then ultimately let the computer show me which camshaft was going to be best for this 393 build. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.